And joining us now from Washington is National Security Council spokesman John Kirby. John, good morning to you. It's always great to have you. So Israel and the U.S. have been expecting a response from Iran, but this was unprecedented. Was the administration surprised in any way by the scale of this attack? It absolutely was a massive air attack that uh, Iran launched on Israel. Uh, we've been watching as closely as we could the intelligence picture. We had a pretty good indication of the size and the scale and the scope uh, of what Iran was planning. And that is why, because we had uh, a good sense of what they were going to do and with how much, uh, that's why we were able to uh, really help Israel knock down almost everything that Iran threw at them. And, John, we know that President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke over the phone last night. And there is a report that Biden told Netanyahu that the U.S. will oppose any Israeli counterattack against Iran. Can you confirm that what was said? And what other context could you provide for that conversation? Uh, that's uh, not a that's not an accurate reading of uh, of the conversation. Uh, the president understands the prime minister uh, runs a government for a sovereign state uh, of Israel, uh, and that they'll decide uh, whether and how they're going to respond to what Iran did last night. We uh, we respect that. Uh, but uh, but again, the president's message to pri the prime minister was that uh, he kn he knows. Uh, that the United States stands with Israel. Uh, there wasn't just the United States. Other countries also uh, helped Israel defend itself last night. Uh, that Israel demonstrated a superior military capability to what the Iranians uh, threw up against them. Uh, and that, of course, uh, as we've said many, many times, we don't want to see uh, the situation escalate further. We're not looking for a war with, with Iran. So then do you expect Israel will strike back directly in Iran? And what's the U.S. role now going forward? I won't speak for the Israelis. That's going to be up to them to decide uh, whether and how uh, they'll respond to this. Uh, they showed last night uh, an incredible military capability uh, on their own, but certainly in concert with friends. They also showed uh, Iran uh, that Israel does have friends, uh, that, there are, that there was a coalition uh, that helps them support themselves. Uh, that, that alone is significant. And, of course, the damage was extremely light. Um, uh, again, showing uh, how, uh, how unified uh, the United States and Israel uh, are in, in, in Israel's self-defense. And, and Iran warned the U.S. to stay out of this conflict, and yet we saw our assets taking down missiles and drones in the skies. Is there a concern now from the administration that Iran could respond with an attack on the U.S. or U.S. assets? The president also made clear in that statement last night that he'll do whatever he has to do to protect our troops and our facilities, our, our people uh, in the region. And we will do that. And we have sent a very clear signal to Iran, uh, privately and publicly, uh, that any attack uh, on our troops and our facilities uh, will, will have consequences. We're very serious about that. We have not seen any threats, specific threats uh, to our personnel or our facilities, but we're going to stay vigilant to that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but when it comes to defending Israel, again, the president has been very, very clear. Uh, Israel is a good friend and an ally, and our commitment to them is ironclad to commit to commitment to helping them defend themselves. And we showed that last night. You know, and our, our viewers might be wondering now, what, is, what does this mean for us and for our troops in the region? And how likely is it that the U.S. now is getting pulled into this wider scale war in the Middle East? Well, it's important to remember that our troops are in the region largely uh, to go after ISIS and th that I ISIS in Iraq, ISIS in Syria. That's why they're there. Uh, and now we had added additional forces to the region since October 7th to help with the defense of Israel and to help the defense of commercial shipping in the Red Sea. So largely what we're doing, with the exception of the mission against ISIS, which, which is a, it's a, it's an active mission, uh, we're largely in a defense role uh, in the Red Sea, in the Gulf of Aden, uh, and in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, that is what we're there for. We're going to obviously be uh, vigilant to, to any potential threat uh, to our forces in the region. But the president has been clear we are not looking for a wider war. We're not looking for a second front or a third front. We're not looking to see escalation. And we're certainly not looking for a war with Iran. Um, the, uh, Iran responded in an unprecedented way. Israel uh, defended in a truly unprecedented, remarkable way. Uh, uh, we don't want to see this situation escalate further. Yeah, the world is watching to see what happens next. John Kirby, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Janae. All right. Well, now to ABC News contributor Colonel Steve Ganyard, who joined us. Steve, thank you so much for being with us. Your extensive military experience, based on what you just heard, 
John Kirby there saying they don't want this conflict to, to spread further. But what's your feeling about whether that happens? Well, Janae, uh, Iran doesn't actually have a lot of friends in the world. Uh, the Chinese and the, uh, and the Russians have been uh, helpful in various ways, but in the region, they really don't have many friends. Most of the Gulf countries, the Saudis, the Emiratis, the Kuwaitis, uh, they don't like Iran much either. So it's hard to see how it would spread much farther. The real key here is that the gloves have been dropped. So it's no longer a shadow war between Israel and Iran. Iran uh, is now going to be vulnerable to Israeli counterattacks, and they are indeed vulnerable. Uh, Israel has a much better ability to project power. Uh, the Israeli Air Force can own the airspace over Iran. Uh, the ships at sea and submarines that uh, Israel has uh, make most of the Iranian shipping and Navy vulnerable. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how Iran uh, or how Israel reacts to this and what they're able to do. I don't think that they need to rush it. They have some time to think about it and pick the targets. But I do think there will be some sort of response from Israel going forward. Uh, okay, so we will be watching for a, a potential response. In terms of the weapons that Iran used, you heard John Kirby there call it a massive air attack. Just how forceful was this? Yeah, it really, really was remarkable. I think everybody was caught off guard about how many weapons that Iran actually launched at Israel. And if you think about it, Janae, the intercepts of these weapons were done from, say, 100 feet off the ground all the way to the edge of space. That's a remarkable defensive military technology achievement. Uh, much of it was either uh, funded by the U.S. or U.S. technology. Note that almost one quarter of the weapons that were intercepted last night were done by U.S. forces. Jordanian forces helped out. We believe that maybe the Saudis and the, and the Emiratis may have helped out. So the U.K. helped out. So there was all sorts of uh, help here for Israel, but a remarkable achievement to have really only one person wounded after almost 330 weapons weapons launched from Iran. So an unprecedented attack, but relatively minimal damage. So, so Steve, was this attack calibrated to send a message or really to do damage? Yeah, the Iranians had been warned to not escalate the situation, maybe to do something that was just uh, at least a, a notional payback to, to Israel. This is why I think most people were caught uh, unawares that 300 weapons were launched. That is beyond just a message. That was a true intent to hurt Israel. And so I think that was the surprise here. And I think that the Iranians can't be surprised when the Israelis retaliate in kind. All right, Colonel Steve Ganyard, thank you so much for being with us this morning to add that context.